Hey, this is Aaron Schust, and you're watching 117 TV. Hey everybody, it's Jennifer Vickery with 117 TV, and I know if you are like me, you are super excited about the fact that this is out. It's Aaron Schuess' brand new project, Morning Rises. Congratulations to you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Yeah, a little excited. bit, a little bit long overdue. It feels like because we've been eager to get some some new music. Of course, God of Brilliant cool. Lights has been doing wonderfully on the radio. I'm sure yes, you all have heard you. that. God of Brilliant Lights is a uh, song. It's, it fits the the uh, the part of the story that's the classic. You know, we're we're in the studio. We have all the songs we're happy with, and uh, there's one more song that there's comes. Always to the, there's more, always one more, right? Always one more, and this is the one. Um, uh, Ed Cash, who produced the last record and this record, and he's great. We all know him and uh -huh. love him. Um, he said, man, I hate to throw a monkey wrench in this whole operation, but my little brother Scott just wrote this song that I think you need to hear. And he played the vast majority of God of Brilliant Lights exactly the way we've, we've heard it. It was, it was practically gift wrap. I like to say we just put a little bow on it at the end. Um, but it was fantastic and it totally fit. I love the, uh, one, part of the thing that we all wrote together was the bridge, like the morning rises, God, your light is shining over mm. us. It ended up being the title of the album, Morning Rises. And I love how um, this whole song talks about this, and especially that title talks about the hope that we have, um, for example, in a sunrise. You know, in the God of brilliant lights, James 1.17 says that, calls God the God of the heavenly lights, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and he does not change like the shifting shadows. But when I think of this song specifically, my favorite verse that gets me excited about singing this song, and I'll intro in concert with this verse, comes from Luke 178, and it's Zechariah, who's the father of John the Baptist. After John is born, uh, Zechariah speaks for the first time in a long time. He breaks out into song, and near the end of the song, he looks forward to the coming of the Messiah, and says, the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness. Mm, I love that. And that's the hope that we need, because mm -hmm. we, we all have our definition of darkness. Well, as you probably know, Aaron has written what I believe to be some of the most impactful worship music through the years, and particularly My Savior, My God. Um, did you have any idea what God would do with that song when you write that? No, uh, n absolutely not. I had no plan, no design, and no dream of what, what God would do with that. I know that in the moment, uh, the words impacted me. Uh, the words and the verses of that song are from an old hymn uh, that I grew up, even though I grew up in the church singing hymns three times a week, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, I'd never even heard of this hymn. And the name of the hymn itself is called I Am Not Skilled to Understand. It jumped off the page as a strange title to me. And I've been going through, I can't call it a crisis of faith, but where my, where my, what I believe was challenged mm -hmm. theologically mm -hmm. um, and being stretched to, uh, to say, you know, I'm not, I'm not personally comfortable with what I'm being taught right now, but I'm seeing it in black and white in the Word of God. Therefore, I have to extend my faith and say, if that's what you say, I believe it. Mm -hmm. So those words, I'm not skilled to understand, was such a release for me to say, you know what, I don't have to have the mysteries of God figured out. And if that's so powerful to me, I want the people of my church where I was leading worship to be able to sing these words. And before I even look up the antiquated melody that probably exists with a song that no one wants to sing, apparently, <laughs> uh, at least not in America. Uh, let's just go ahead and write a brand new melody. Not to improve it, but just because I didn't even have reference to the old one. Just write a simple, accessible, easy, attainable melody mm -hmm. that we could all sing in church. And a year and a half later, I wrote the chorus at a really? red light. Yeah, so we sang it at my church without the chorus for a year and a half. So a little bit more about the new music, of course, and we talked about God of Brilliant Lights. What else, uh, do you, is there a theme of this or just in general? I'm guessing your goal probably is just that it brings people closer. I think um, an overarching theme, besides the morning rises and the hope that's represented there, uh, one of the things, and I, I, this is something that came to me through a message. I think, honestly, I think in my own Bible study, in my own reading and morning, you know, devotional time, as we like to call it, I, I was reading Job one day. And we, you know, my, my family and I, we've been going through some tough times with some physical health of our children, and so we've we've taken a. We've taken uh, some refuge in, in Job's experience and say, well, if he went through what he, what he went through um, and came out on the good end of it, well, what can we learn from that? And just in chapter one, when his entire world falls apart, everything, all of his wealth is gone, taken away from him, all of his children 
uh, pass away in one fell swoop. His response, his first response, is he, he grieves, he shaves his head, tears his robes, but, he, but as he does that, he drops to his knees in worship, and he says, the name of the Lord is to be praised. You give, you take away, blessed be the name of the Lord. That's what that means. Um, and I, th- and it, I was convicted, quite honestly, that a lot of my prayers, a lot of my prayer time, even though I was running to the Lord, um, it was for deliverance only, um, which I still pray for deliverance um, from some situations that I wish were not as they were. Um, and I ask for God to step in and, and take control, take charge, take over. But before I do that, I want to make sure I praise. That was Job's first response. I want that to be my first response. Because even though my situation isn't, you know, uh, as I would like it, God is still the same. God is still in control. He's still trustworthy. Uh, and as we read in Jeremiah 20, 29, 11, He has a plan not to harm us, but to give us a future and a hope. If we believe those things, then we can truly respond in praise. And that's what I wanted to put in this album, an album chock full of praise. Awesome, awesome. So we will all receive a little dose of hope by listening to this. Thank you, Aaron. Congratulations, and I hope everyone rushes out to get Morning Rises. Morning Rises.